If you are considering an investment into a solar power system for your home in Texas, then stop right there. I want you to watch this video first because I am going to be teaching you how the solar program works in Texas in 2024, as well as going other important details such as the brand of solar panels which work best in Texas, state rebates and tax incentives, and also which installers are best to work with. And make sure that you stick around until the end because I will be going over the typical price range that you should expect to pay to get solar installed in your home in Texas in 2024 in order so that you can make sure that you're getting the best deal. To begin, Texas is split up amongst five main power companies. You have Encore, who's the largest transmission and distribution utility in Texas and owns the grid in the greater Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area, as well as parts of East Texas. Centerpoint Energy, who provides electricity to the Houston metropolitan area, American Electrical Power, AEP, who serves customers in South and West Texas, CPS, who serves the greater San Antonio area, and lastly, Austin Energy, who provides service to the greater Austin metropolitan area. There are also other electrical companies in the state, in fact, over 60, though if you trace them back, the majority will just be subsidiaries of one of these five companies. Now, Texas utility companies work in a very unique way in that for the majority of Texas homeowners, they purchase power from a deregulated utility market, meaning they get to choose their electrical provider from a range of competing companies rather than being restricted to a single power company. This is true for the majority of the state, but is not the case for homeowners, for example, in markets like Austin, in which you would be required to purchase power from Austin Energy and Austin Energy alone. But let's just say that you live in the greater Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area. You will have the option between different retail electricity providers to pick from that purchase energy from the Encore grid which will have an impact as far as what kind of a solar program you get into. Now, Texas continues to be one of the fastest growing residential solar markets in the country, and the reason is primarily thanks to very favorable net metering policy. I know a lot of you watching this channel have already been following this, and you know what net metering means, but for those of you who are new to the subject of solar energy, what net metering means is that the relationship between you and the power company is an equal two-way relationship meaning that if you have solar power available and excess solar power available, not only can you use it to power your home directly, but you can also export your extra solar. In other words, you can send your solar power back to the electrical meter for full price credit. And what happens is that electricity will flow out of your meter and the power company will take it and then sell it to one of your neighbors. And then at that point, they will give you a full price credit for that excess solar energy that you generated. And having that full credit is important because after the sun sets during evening hours, you are going to be pulling energy back in from the utility, assuming you do not have your own battery storage system. So you're gonna be pulling energy back in from the utility during evening hours. And so it's during those hours that you're using those credits that you built up during the daytime hours to offset your bill. And that's what you would want ideally is a full true one for one net metering credit. So you send them a kilowatt hour, you take a kilowatt hour from them, it all balances out even. And for the majority of Texas homeowners, if you live in a deregulated market, you will have the option to switch over to one of these retail electricity providers that will offer you a true one-to-one -one net metering program, giving you full retail credits for every kilowatt hour that you send back to the grid. Additionally, those credits will roll over month to month at that full retail rate, meaning that in months such as the early spring or late fall, when your electrical usage is lower due to nicer weather, you can begin to accumulate credits to then use in months like the midsummer where your electrical usage may exceed what the solar system can produce. You will still, however, regardless of whether or not you have solar, be required to pay a connection fee, the fee for just being connected to the grid, which can vary between 10 and $25 per month. Because of this net metering program and the relatively low cost to install solar in the state of Texas, the typical return on investment for a grid tied solar only system in the state is often between six and 10 years. And this is really gonna be the reason why you see so many companies moving here. And why you see ads left and right to save money by purchasing solar for your home in the state. Now, having a favorable net metering program is not the case in all states. States like California and Arizona have less favorable net metering programs that only give homeowners 15 to 25 cents on the dollar for the energy that they send back to the grid. And so for that reason, over the past few years, many solar contractors have been moving into Texas as it's really become one of the new hubs for residential solar. But unfortunately with that has come many bad contractors. Compared to other states, it's fairly easy to start up shop in Texas. So 
We've seen a lot of home roofing and electrical companies transition into installing solar and also large sales companies migrate here and just start subcontracting out all of their installs. Because of this, many insurance companies over the past couple of years have begun to drop homeowners with these poorly installed solar systems or simply increase their insurance rates drastically if they can tell that the equipment and install quality is not up to par. But again, this is why you want to make sure that you choose the right contractor when you're installing solar. So don't just shop on the cheapest price and who's offering you the lowest monthly payment. You really want to make sure that you do your homework and ask yourself if you're working with a highly reputable contractor who is going to do quality work. And of course, if you need some help with selecting the right contractor for your project, we would be happy to help you with that here at Solar Pros. We work with some of the best solar companies across the state. And so if you would like to receive a solar proposal for your house in Texas, or maybe you already have a bid and you'd simply like to receive a comparison bid just to make sure that you're getting a good deal, feel free to reach out to us by booking a call using the link below the video, and we would be happy to provide you with some options for your home. Now, moving on from speaking about the net metering and solar policy, I want to speak about what solar panels will work best in the state of Texas and which I recommend. If you have watched some of my previous videos where I've ranked solar panels, you may have heard me mention that the best solar panel for your home can depend on the area that you are in and the type of project that you're installing. And Texas is certainly not an exemption to this rule. In Texas, there are going to be a few things that I recommend specifically taking into account when evaluating solar panels, and those things are going to be the temperature coefficient and the durability of the panel. Now, one thing that you may already know about solar panels is that they come with warranties, oftentimes a 12 to 25 year product warranty, which guarantees against manufacturer defects, and a 25 to 30 year linear power warranty, which guarantees that the panel will not degrade in performance more than a given amount year over year. However, the one thing that will not be warranted will be damage caused by the panels from natural events such as hail. Hail damage to panels in Texas is one of the most common service calls that we hear about, and so we really advise homeowners to prioritize durability as a leading factor when comparing different solar panel options. Aside from talking about investing into a durable panel, it's also extremely important that we invest into a panel that has a low temperature coefficient. Now, when I speak about temperature coefficient, I'm simply referring to how well the solar panel will perform in high temperature environments. Generally speaking, solar panels will operate at their highest efficiency with conditions of 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and for every degree above that, they're slightly less efficient. In Texas specifically, temperature coefficient comes out to being one of the most important ratings when evaluating panel options, because while average annual temperatures in the mid-afternoon in Texas during the summer months can hover around 90 degrees, the actual temperatures can be upwards of 20 to 30 degrees higher than that, impacting the panel's daytime production massively. Therefore, we often tend towards recommending made in America solar panel options for homeowners in Texas, such as the Q-Cell, the Silfab, and others, as for they're gonna give you the best long-term production and long-term durability. Another great solar panel option specific to homeowners in the state of Texas will be the Mission Solar Panel. The Mission Solar Panel, this panel is gonna be one of the only solar panel options on the market that you will find that is designed, engineered, and assembled all in the state of Texas, specifically in San Antonio, Texas. We have found with the Mission Panel that it's been designed and engineered to specifically work very well for the climate in Texas, and for those reasons, I think it's a great option for homeowners in the state. Being that this panel is assembled here in the state of Texas, Mission is also able to receive domestic manufacturing solar tax credits for this panel. Again, those are tax credits from the federal government that will be credited towards Mission. However, since this means the accounting is more favorable for Mission, we can typically take into account that they're able to lessen the cost at which they sell these panels, not only to distributors, but ultimately to the homeowners. Also on the topic of selecting equipment for your solar project, in the state of Texas, there is a very large market for homeowners wanting to include a battery into their project for the purpose of having storage in the event of a grid down outage. Now again, most homeowners in the state of Texas will have one for one net metering, so they will not need to use a battery similarly to how California homeowners do in which the battery is powering the house during the nighttime when the solar is not producing, but instead most homeowners in Texas will look at batteries as a solution for having backup power during power outages, whether due to large storms or rolling blackouts during the summertime. If you are looking into a high voltage wall mounted battery product that can be connected to a solar system that can provide storage in the event of an outage, there are a few batteries specifically that I would lean towards recommending. If you're interested in a battery that can provide enough energy storage and power output to power all of the loads in the house, including the HVAC system with 
only one or two batteries. I think the Franklin whole home battery is a tremendous solution and one of the most popular batteries for homeowners in Texas looking for a true whole home backup solution. Otherwise, if you're looking for a lower cost solution, maybe something that's slightly smaller and has slightly less capabilities than the Franklin whole home, but will also allow you the ability to power all of the 120 volt outlets in the house, as well as a number of bigger loads in the house in the event of an outage, then I think that the Solar Edge Energy Bank is also a great product. And lastly, if you want a mix of both low cost, but also high power output, then I think Tesla Powerwall 3 will be a solid option. In regards to state rebates and tax incentives, the state of Texas does not currently offer a state tax credit to homeowners who purchase solar in the state. However, what they do have is legislation in place, which allows you to take advantage of a sales tax exemption, meaning that you do not have to pay a 6.25% sales tax on the purchase of a system. And they will also offer a property tax exemption on the added home value from the rooftop solar system. So your property taxes will not go up due to the added appraised value of your home once you have solar. I'm really curious to know if you've already gone solar in the state of Texas, how your experience has been, and if you think that I missed something worth covering. So feel free to leave a comment down below as far as what your experience has been like in Texas with going solar, and I'll reply if you have any questions or feedback. As far as what you should expect to pay for solar in the state of Texas, obviously it can depend on the quality of equipment that you're purchasing and the contractor that you work with. But from my experience of reviewing quotes of what I'm seeing solar being sold at in the state of Texas, if you're looking at using a tier one panel and a tier one inverter, you're likely looking at a little bit under $3 price per watt. So again, solar is sold on a price per watt basis, meaning the cost depends on how many solar panels that you invest into. But let's just say for an easy example that you need a 10,000 watt system to offset 100% of your $300 a month electric bill you might be looking at around 30 grand for a system. There are other factors to take into account, such as the brand and the quality of the panels and inverters that you choose to go with, as well as what type of roof that you have or whether or not you're looking to do a more complex system such as the ground mount. But again, I hope that just gave you a general idea. Now, this information provided will help you navigate going solar for your home in Texas, but if you are in the process of shopping for different solar options for your home, you will need to make sure that you understand common regrets that people have after purchasing solar for your home. So make sure you go ahead and check out my video going over the five things that homeowners regret after buying solar for their home, which will pop up in the screen now. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.